I think we're all done with our form right now. We've got a name, a phone, and we can select a shift. So as soon as the user enters all these things in, we can start to try to take this data and submit it off to some location. Now when a user submits this form, we want to persist this data somehow. So if the user ever logs out and then logs back in, or even uninstalls the app, or uses it on a different device, right? We still want the user to see their list of employees. To save our data, we're going to be making use of Firebase. We're already using it for authentication, so it makes sense to also use it to store our data as well. Firebase was definitely initially known for its data storage capabilities anyway, so definitely makes sense to use it for this purpose. One thing I want to say is a quick reminder. Remember that the object that we're trying to save right here it is what we're going to refer to as an employee model. It's going to be an object that has a name, a phone, and a shift. And right now, that is what our form is producing inside of the employee form reducer. The employee form reducer is going to end up with a name, a phone, and a shift. So just keep that in mind. I want to open up the Firebase console for a moment. So I'm going to open up Firebase console. And then on the left-hand side of my project, I'm going to find the database tab right here. So here's my database. Right now, our database is completely empty, so we don't see any data in here whatsoever. We can see just you know manager 2328B, which is the name of my app. Firebase is a JSON data store, so it's not like a SQL database where you have a number of different tables uh, and different rows on each of these tables. It is a JSON data store. The easiest way to picture this data is to just, or the structure of the data that we're going to put in here, is to just think of it as a JavaScript object where we're going to have some number of properties and each property has a value. Okay, I want to spend a little bit of time kind of exploring the data structure of our application and how we might st structure that inside of our Firebase database. I really recommend whenever using Firebase to spend some time to think about the schema of the data that you want to save in here because it's really going to save you uh, some time down the line. I've already taken the liberty of kind of putting together a schema for our database. Uh, so let's go ahead, check out a diagram and see what it's going to look like. Now this diagram, uh, really not that useful. Uh, it's, it's a nasty little diagram. Maybe. If, if this diagram doesn't make sense, I, I don't blame you. It's really hard to model uh, JSON in a diagram format. So we're going to look at it in this kind of diagram format, and then we'll look at it in plain JSON form as well. Maybe that'll be a little bit more useful. So first, let me start off by telling you that the schema that we're going to use here for this app is super generic and common in Firebase. And I picked this schema on purpose to make sure that you can reuse it on your own apps as well without a lot of change. So everything we're going to do right here, you can reuse on a lot of very different types of apps and have a lot of luck with it. It's going to work out really well for you. So let's go over the diagram and then we'll look at the raw JSON. I think the JSON will make a lot more sense. The overall blue box is meant to represent just Firebase. Like here's Firebase, here is our database. Inside of Firebase, we are going to create a collection of users. So we're going to have a number of users inside our application. Each user, so like user 1, user 2, and user 3, is going to have their own collection of employees. So user 1 has a collection of employees that contains employee number 1 and employee number 2. At this time, we are already authenticating users, right? Like users exist in our application, but just because we have authentication enabled with Firebase does not mean that we automatically get all the different users like injected into our data store as well. They're really two separate things in Firebase. You've got authentication and you've got the database. They can kind of read data from each other, but the database does not inherently have like a separate private bucket for each of our users. Like we have to set up that type of system if we want it to. All right, maybe I'm not making too much sense here with this diagram. Let's check out the JSON. Maybe this will make a little bit more sense. So this is essentially the data structure that we're going to see inside of our application. At the very top level, so this is like all data that exists in Firebase. This is everything for all the different users, our entire application. At the very top level, we're going to have a collection of users. So I literally mean like a user's key. 
that is going to point at an object. The keys of that object are each of our individual users. So like user with ID 456 or user with ID 123. Then each of these users will have a collection of employees. So here's user 123. They have a collection of employees that contains employee with ID 1 and ID 2. And then each employee, in turn, has their own name, phone number, and shift. All right, so that's this is the general idea here. I really get the feeling that this might not be, you know, maybe this is making sense to you. Uh, definitely JSON schema like this is something where it's really a lot more easy if you kind of walk through it yourself uh, and get to see the data, especially in the Firebase console. So let's, t let's treat this as just kind of a very broad overview of what's going on here and continue in just a little bit and figure out like, okay, how do we actually put this thing together? The one last really important thing that I want to point out here is that each user who signs up for our app is going to have their own little slice of data, right? So here's user one, two, three. They're going to have their own little collection of employees right here. And we should make sure that we implement some type of security in our application to make sure that users cannot hack around in our app and somehow read like the employees that user 456 has. Okay, so we need to make sure that we have some amount of security in Firebase. All right, let's continue in the next section and expand a little bit more on security. <laughs>